Hello and welcome to Investment Trends uh, with me, Brian Mulamba. Now, if you are in international trade, you will agree with me that trade finance is extremely important for economies of scale and bulk discounts. On the program this week, we explore the Zambia Export Development Fund to understand the role of the fund and its achievements in as far as financing exports for Zambian traders is concerned. My guest on the program is the man at the helm of the fund, uh, Dr. David Chewe. Welcome to the program. It's uh, really great to have you on the program because really, uh, you know, your your role as far as um, trying to change Zambia's political landscape, um, you know, is concerned. It cannot, uh, you know, be overemphasized. Uh, but let's begin by, first of all, just understanding what this fund is about for some of our viewers who perhaps are, are hearing about this for the very first time. Um, and I need of a very brief background or, you know, just a general sense of what this fund is about. Thank you, Brian. And... Uh Thanks to the viewers out there. The Zambia Export Development Fund is an initiative of the European Union and the Zambian government to try and support the increased contribution of the non-traditional exports uh, to the Zambian economy and also increasing the number of jobs that are created in the country. Mm -hmm. So this fund has been in existence from as far back as 2000. It's been operational. All right. Yes, and uh, there have been quite a number of significant milestones that have been attained. And suffice to say that um, the fund finances anything other than copper and cobalt. Okay. Yes. I is there any reason why it's taken that, that, that direction? It is uh, because we are trying to diversify. We're moving away from the traditional exports. If you mm -hmm. recall, Zambia has re been renowned as being an exporter of copper and cobalt. So right. we now have to uh, re focus and uh, try and promote the other non traditional exports. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in your view, do you think that um, um, you know it's it's had any impact uh, in as far as promoting exports for the country is concerned? I, I would say yes and no, and right. the reason being that uh, if uh, the viewers out there uh, may have been following statistics, mm -hmm. if we look at the Zambia's exports, uh, between seventy-five to about uh, eighty percent of exports still remain uh, copper and uh, related uh, products, whilst the, the other twenty-five. 20% is accounted for by the non-traditional exports. Mm -hmm. And when the fund was uh, initiated, the idea was uh, we could mm -hmm. use uh, the interventions that were put in place, which were working around creating scale and capacity for identified producers to be able to drive this agenda. Mm -hmm. And we did score some positives, but over the years, some of those positives have evaporated because uh, either the business has failed mm -hmm. or the economic landscape changed and ultimately we were not able to realize the anticipated benefits and that's why we continue to re refocus and reposition mm -hmm. ourselves all right yes um uh, i mean obviously this fund i could be wrong please correct me if, if, if i am but uh, uh, you know this fund um should motivate zambians mm -hmm. zambian entrepreneurs to uh begin to think about you know exporting isn't it yes D do you think uh, you know that is a score that that you know this fund has scored in the recent past um, would you say that you know Zambian uh, entrep uh, entrepreneurs, enterprises are now beginning to think, look, I should export because th there's this fund that is going to go a long way in actualizing my dream of becoming an exporter, so to speak. I, I would want to recontextualize what you've just highlighted and right. show the viewers that uh, when we started the fund, there were three key objectives that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. The first one is uh, how do we create the scale? meaning that there are entrepreneurs that currently may not be able to uh, meet the demands of the market, and uh, therefore we need to do some interventions. So in this regard, there were specific interventions to build that scale. The second bit was um, how can we help these entrepreneurs access markets? Again, the fund had to work around taking these entrepreneurs to different markets across the globe. Mm -hmm. And in that intervention, the expectation was that now that they've been exposed, they should be able to exploit these opportunities. And this is where now the third objective, which was now to give them working capital, which they should utilize to service the identified markets and having uh, received the capacity that uh, they so lacked. Now, uh, one of the gaps which, which we didn't still address is the issue around access to capital expenditure finance, because what we provide is working capital. So these entrepreneurs, they a market, they've also been trained <coughs> But in order for them to actually meet the requirements of the market, they also need uh, 
capital, which will be in form of machinery or equipment that they need to actually prepare these exports. And now we don't provide that. Mm. And the banking sector largely does not provide that. Uh, so this is where the gap lies. So we've been looking now for a way to actually have a complete solution because we are giving half solution at the time, not a full package. And this is the extent to which most of the entrepreneurs, when they come to us, mm -hmm. the story is fantastic. They have this brilliant idea, but they don't have, you know, they cannot produce sufficient quantities to actually meet the demand in a particular market. Mm -hmm. And uh, in most of the cases, they continue to export raw commodities. And when you export a raw commodity, there's limited value addition, there's limited contribution to export earnings because we are not yet there. So we have achieved some positive milestones, but we still have work that we need to work on, which would actually help us to say we've arrived. So at, mm. least at, at the moment, we've not arrived because most of the entrepreneurs, we still don't give them capital expenditure financing, which is very critical for their business operations. Mm. Yes. Uh, but how, how would you describe the appetite by our entrepreneurs to, um, to export, uh, you know, to become exporters? You know, like you're saying, Obviously, when we, when as a country, we begin to export more, we're going to have more forex, isn't it? It mm -hmm. helps to boost the strength of our quachi and things of that sort. But do you see that appetite in our local entrepreneurs to become exporters? Maybe let me give you a statistic. Mm -hmm. uh, every quarter, I get about forty-five uh, applications of rather interest. People coming to us saying they want to export, mm -hmm. but. One out of 45 would actually be able Meet to the submit the documentation that demonstrates that they are actually export ready. Because to be export ready, you should have also tried your products in the local market. You should yeah. have had sufficient uh, sort of uh, experience with your product in the local market, which gives you the confidence to mm -hmm. go out there. Mm -hmm. Now, in most of the cases, what I see is that the entrepreneur comes to us even before they've actually prepared themselves simply because they heard there's an export of goods to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> they want to export, but they yeah. have not really understood what it means to run a business and to support an export component of your business. Mm -hmm. They hear there's cowpea that is demanded in Botswana, then they rush to us. We want to export. But they have missed out some critical steps that are very important in uh, being export ready. Mm -hmm. So the appetite is there, the excitement is there, but they still need to do a bit more work. And uh, I would like to believe there's also the element that we have seen where the business plans that most of the people want to give us are not their own. It is something they bought from the streets or they just downloaded it from the internet and uh, they've not customized it to their own business. So when we begin to check as to what they've said they would do, mm -hmm. it is not aligning with the financial projections they've given. And on that score, it makes the, us believe that they are not export ready. The other side is uh, where we ask them, yes, you are saying you're going to export. You have a market. If you understand your market, then it should be very easy for you to share with us how you're going to make this delivery, meaning what ingredients do you require and from where? And then what processes are you going to take your, your product through before it is actually ready for export? And then there are certifications and uh, licenses. For example, if you're going to export a product, you require an export permit. If that is required. Th those are the steps that they need to work with. But then you find that when they come to us, they have not even gone through those processes. And uh, they are expecting that uh, when they submit the application, it will be favorably considered. And then when we go through our checklist, we find that there are these gaps. And that is a frustration for them, because mm -hmm. they ought to have been told at the outset. But when I come on radio or on TV and I'm saying, we have got the funds. They are thinking <laughs> that these funds, I can, anyone can access them, but there are those steps that they need to comply with. Mm -hmm. And this is what we've been working on. Um, from which sector are you receiving the, the most of the applications? Uh, in fact, I should have, uh, give, when I gave the background, I should have said that uh, we had a very structured approach. Mm -hmm. We supported, uh, you know, gemstone mining and mining related activities, the handicrafts. Then we also did... Uh, in, in agriculture, primary agriculture, and then agri-processing, which also includes uh, processed foods. And then there's a sub-component within there which talks about organically produced uh, products, which was a component. Then we have uh, uh, issues to do with timber and timber products, and all the other sectors. In, uh, so what, what we've seen in the past is that uh, uh, horticultural sec sector benefited, primary agriculture benefited, 
honey and uh, other organic products benefited. And then we have had uh, processed, processed foodstuffs out of maize and the maize uh, components, soybean, groundnuts. So different sub subsectors were involved, and this is what we're promoting. We are covering all the subsectors as contained in the seventh national development plan, mm. and also. We've included services because the services sector is a significant contributor to the country's uh, GDP. Mm -hmm. So that has also been included, meaning you can actually export a service. Mm -hmm. I yes. see. Uh, are there any services that many are hoping to, to export out there that, that, that you've noticed? Yes, at the mm -hmm. we've, we've received interest where, for example, a company has got a construction tender or they want to go and do a consultancy. Mm -hmm. So they will come to us uh, to access working capital. At the moment, our, co our portfolio is heavily tilted towards agriculture, mm -hmm. primary and the process. Then we All have right. wood and wood processing. Then uh, mining in, in terms of gemstones and uh, the handicrafts. These are the key sectors at the moment where we are heavily tilted. Mm. But uh, our idea is to begin to unpack and uh, balance the, the portfolio. All right. Yes. Uh, and like you're saying, when you go on TV, when you come on TV like you have today, yes. and when you go on radio, um, and you talk about the fact that you have this fund, people get extremely excited. Uh, excited and they want to come and apply. So there could be somebody out there who's very excited right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, at the hearing of the fact that th there's this fund. Let, let's imagine I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and I really want to export. Um, what do I need? How do I access this fund? Uh, the, our, our, it's a checklist. All right. It's basically, you should be a registered uh, Zambian uh, business. Mm -hmm. And the registration can be a sole trader, a cooperative, you can, it can be a partnership, it can be a limited liability company. Mm. And all that is uh, through PACRA. And you should be registered with NAPSA and ZRA. Now, for our own criteria, we expect you to demonstrate that you are export ready, meaning that you are already exporting or you've been doing some work that has allowed you now to attain export readiness. So there's, there's a checklist. There are all sorts of questions that we ask you. And as ADA under the Export Promotions Wing does actually provide detailed uh, uh, preparation of these entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Then we want you to share with us your business plan, which shares with us your dream or your vision. And within there, there will be financial projections so that we can see how our money will help you to realize your dream. Mm -hmm. Then we also ask you, share with us how you will fulfill this export because we don't want you to fail when you fail. Zambia's reputation as a, in a country that does not fulfill you know, commitments mm -hmm. is affected. So we want you to share with us your plan. How are you going to make this export? And then the other requirements is basically you should have financial statements for the past two years if you are already an existing business. If you are a business that has not uh, attended the two years uh, in operations, but uh, you have projections, we require you to get uh, these financials prepared by a certified and practicing member of the Zambia Institute of Chartered Accountants. Mm. So we have catered for those who may not be already in business. And then we expect you to give us a, a bank uh, statement for the past six months. We just want to understand the nature of the flows that go through your account. Mm -hmm. and then we need to know who are the key people that are involved in, in this business. So we want the CVs of the key people and uh, the directors of the, the business. I, I should have said that uh, this is largely tilted so towards Zambians. We favor Zambians. So the majority of the owners of the business should be Zambian. If you, they, they, are, they are in the minority, we don't consider applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expect you to also give us uh, 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 copies of the identity cards, that's the passports or NRCs. And, and this, this is the basic criteria. And also a confirmation that what you intend to export is not on the list of banned substances, because there are some substances which you cannot export out of the country. Mm. Yes, so this is the basic criteria that we use. And our interest rates are very affordable. Uh, we offer these loans at uh, LIBOR plus 6 with a maximum of 8%. At the moment, we are lending at 6.62%. Mm. And these loans are for a period of up to 12 months, but right. we do factor in the production cycle, so it can go up to maybe 15 months or 18 months because mm. of the, the cycle of the entrepreneur's uh, business process. All right. We'll look at the conditions uh, in detail, um, you know, but I I'd like to uh, dwell on one point that you raised, um, that you must be export ready. Yes. What is being <laughs> export ready? Uh, say if um, I'm a farmer, for instance, yes. I grow tomatoes and things of that sort, at what point do I gauge myself as being export ready? Uh, like I stated, uh, they said the whole detailed checklist mm -hmm. because there are issues around, first and foremost, mm -hmm. 
do you understand that these markets require certain uh, commitment? For example, if you are going to sell a product in a market, this product should comply with the regulatory requirements of that particular market, both health and uh, from the you know, hazardous effects. The second bit is around yourself as a business. Do you know, uh, how much do you know about the market where you want to sell your product? How has the demand for the product been established? Is it through mm. you going directly or is it through a third party? And uh, these products that you are going to sell, what would be the packaging, what would be the labeling, and there are the different requirements from for different countries where you have to indicate the, where it has originated from, the composition of the, and then the packaging, the, how the label should be, all those are requirements from a particular market. And then there's an issue around, uh, for example, now we have the Africa Free Trade, uh, you know, the, the yeah. signing of that agreement. Mm -hmm. There's also some incentives which allows you to sell in a particular market because we should be able to know how this product will compete in the, a particular market, which also affects your pricing. Because when you are quoting your price, do you quote free on board or the cost, which also includes insurance and freight, and then the logistics that you that will be involved when you'll be selling your product to or delivering the product to the other counterparty, and a few other aspects. So it's a whole detailed checklist. And what we are just interested in is to understand, even from your side, are you actually positioned to fulfill this commitment? that you are entering into mm -hmm. because uh, somebody will sign an order or a letter of intent mm -hmm. but they don't even have the manpower to actually process that product or they have they are using a third party but they've not put in a mechanism that stop the other party from stopping them from fulfilling an order maybe the contract is terminated but the other party is expecting the product and in international business that is very very important you need to comply with the commitments that you've set for yourself uh, and so newcomers are to some extent, <laughs> not allowed to, 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 to apply? No, they are, because mm. remember I said that you might be exporting or you have potential. Now, right. the potential is where we've established that this product is in, on demand in a particular country. Okay. And um, how are we helping those clients, I think, to answer your question? Mm. If, for example, there's already a client who's exporting, I'll give the example of pork. Mm -hmm. If there's already somebody who's exporting pork and you want to export pork, when you come to us, we link you through the one that is already exporting so that we, you minimize having to relearn some mm. of these things. Minimize the mistakes. Yes, just like cowpeas. If uh, somebody is already exporting cowpeas and you want to be involved in exporting cowpeas, we link you through a particular producer who is already servicing the market. That's mm. one way through which we are addressing this issue because we want anyone who has this dream to realize their dream, but it's the steps that, we, that would differ because if right. they have not reached capacity, then we create that capacity. Mm. Yes. Do you have any, any success stories that you, you, you know um, that you may be kind enough to share with us? Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, just from the time the fund was established, uh, the forest fruits, they export honey to Europe. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, uh, we have uh, the wood processing in Livingstone. Uh, there's a company called Zamwood. They do fine timber products which they export in the Sadek region. And then we have had uh, a number of applicants in the Jamson Mining, who the Zambian Association of Women in Mining, who are beneficiaries of the fund. Mm -hmm. The Zambia Timber Producers Association, they are beneficiaries of the fund. The Lumber Millers Association of Zambia. And uh, Zambia Export Growers, who are involved with the Zega, export of uh, horticultural products. And uh, the, we have uh, Coffee Growers Association of Zambia. And uh, a few others. The, the list is, uh, is quite long. And mm -hmm. in recent past, We've supported uh, two female-operated entrepreneurial uh, businesses that are involved in uh, export of livestock products. That's uh, village chickens mm -hmm. and pork to uh, DRC. Uh, as we speak, there's also there are two applications. One is going into uh, servicing DRC for uh, PPEs, and then mm -hmm. the other one will be exporting uh, legumes into Botswana. All right. Yes. So, so we have uh, a number of them. Uh, that uh, we've been able to support, including in the honey sector, apart from uh, forest fruits, we have mm -hmm. others that we've supported. All right, interesting. So somebody out there is asking, um, what is the criteria? You mentioned early on there's a, lot ch there's a huge checklist that, 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 that you look at. Um, uh, what, what, what do I need um, for me to be able to get the, um, you know, the, the fund? And also, mm -hmm. the repayment plan. You mentioned something very interesting. Your interest rates are very competitive and massive for size. Yeah. Uh, but you may want to be level on that um, as far as this, this fund is concerned. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like I stated, on mm -hmm. the conditions, it's basically a checklist. Right. You have registered business, 
you will register with PACRA and the ZRA, ZRA, you have a business plan. Then you share with us export strategy, the list of the directors. That, that is really, right. yes. And then on the, when we say export readiness, it's a checklist again. These are the questions we ask you to help you ascertain whether or not you are export ready. But uh, the starting point is a dream. Okay. And then uh, once you submit the application, there's a standard application form. In the application form, we just want to understand how you are structured, how has been your performance in the last three years, or what are, what are your projections for the next three years. And uh, with the money that we're going to give you out, does it help you realize your dream? Okay. And then within there, we also ask how many jobs are you currently registering? And when you get our money, how, how many additional jobs will you be getting? So that in itself is what we use to measure the outcome. But right. the criteria is very, very uh, easy. And then we ask for collateral, which I didn't talk about. But collateral, under collateral, you can use um, different forms of collateral, including assignment of receivables. If you've got an order, we use the order as part of the collateral. Of course, with uh, equipment and uh, land and buildings, they also form, form. But we have attempted to make this collateral easily accessible so that Zambians can actually access this fund. All right. Yes. Uh, as, as a wind up, what, what's the maximum amount you can give? Uh, at the moment, what's, what's the minimum? The minimum the is ten thousand dollars, right? And the maximum is hundred thousand dollars. But what we've done, mm -hmm. we realize that the hundred thousand dollars does not speak to some of the big exporters. So we are working with partners to increase the maximum. The maximum. And right. uh, as 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 we speak, I am currently in discussion with potential funders for transactions worth thirteen point one million dollars, wow. and the minimum is about two fifty of those transactions. The maximum is about two million. So we've actually been talking to clients, and based on their need, we've been able to look for partners to support these uh, exports. So that uh, what should actually be the limitation is the ability of the entrepreneur and not the funding side. Mm. And we are also running another uh, project called uh, the piloting uh, of the financing of uh, agribusiness. Mm. And this one is a, a, pro a project where we are working with the, the high value cash crops in the agricultural sector. And we've set up uh, about $2.6 million, $2 million for that purpose. We are just busy recruiting different right. players. I, I want to thank you very much for coming through. Uh, I'm afraid we have to drop it here for now. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, maybe um, under 30 seconds, if it's possible, how do potential exporters um, you know, and those who want to, um, to enhance their exports you know, uh, get in touch with you? Uh, they can get in touch uh, through the, my, my mobile phone, 973 mm. One nine seven three zero four four three six five, or the email uh, david dot chewe at zda dot org dot zm, or they can come to the zda information resource center Cairo Road here in Lusaka, and we'll be able to attend to them. We are on the same ground floor where there is a library, or they can go through zda and through zda they'll be referred to us, and we can still speak with them all right yeah. you, you maintain an, an open door policy <laughs> very very open in all fact right. uh, the, our turnaround time is within 30 days we're able to turn around an application if the applicant gives us all the documentation so we're wow. very very, open. very efficient as well yes i want to thank you very much for coming through doc and wish you the best of luck um and we'll call upon you once again um should uh, need arise thank you very much for coming to you thank you very much i appreciate all right uh, Dr. David Chewe, Zambia Export uh, Development Fund Manager, giving us more information around this fund and how you out there who's hoping to become an exporter you know, can benefit from this particular fund. My name is Brian Mulamba. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.